This podcast contains explicit language. And spoilers. Only if you suck. Hi. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Not bad, you. Not bad. I'm Carlos. I'm Dave. You know what we should do? <laughs> We're both fat guys. We should talk about games. But, but the anime rave. The anime rave is getting much more views. And don't worry, I am already reassessing my purpose in the universe because of that. <laughs> but we still have a sworn duty and the release schedule to talk about games. Yeah, I guess. We do. And gaming talk. But you know, the, 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 the internet at large wouldn't care if we dropped this one and just go completely anime rave. As much as your um, hair is going on fire and you're pissed off. Yeah, the problem with that is I would have to actually commit seppuku on you. And then tell people, oh man, Dave suddenly exploded into a knife. So there's that. Okay, we can keep going with this just to keep your panties in. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I was going to do it. Listen to this banter, folks. <sighs> this is banter. Like, Not really. Back and forth between Carlos and Dave. Two Bad Guys Talk Games, episode 47. This one will not be titled Jizzing in the Livestream because I haven't thought of a title for this one. Um, but we do have things to talk about because we were looking for some couch co-op games before we started this. And we found nothing but games that didn't support couch co-op and games that you think are awesome but are actually not. So what's the deal with the lack of couch co-op games? I blame the internet. I do blame the internet. People have gotten too used to online but what happened to the joy of uh, loading up Jamestown, playing with your pal in the same room? We still do that. We do do that. In fact, that's one of the few games that we do do couch co-op and is very fun. Yeah, but of course that used to be a thing. Like, that used to be the way to play multiplayer was to crowd everyone around and then Bomberman the shit up out of the room. But uh, the big question is, like... Uh, has online killed that? Not really. We see PC games with it all the time. But uh, is it cool for a developer to have online co-op and then not have local co-op, like, say, Castlevania Harmony of Despair? Which did have it for their PSN version. Yeah, the PSN version had it, but fuck that. <laughs> what of the Xbox 360 didn't. I personally think it, unless you can make the argument that you're not supposed to see each other's screens like, say, virtual on or something, that you really should have the option. And even then, Halo had that. Yeah, it did. It, they gave you the option. They're like, okay, fine, you can play couch co-op. Just be aware that your location is not a secret. I think in some cases, Cliffy B, um, they don't want to dilute their vision of how the game should be. Yeah, but then Cliffy B crack, crapped out three, four awesome couch co-op friendly Ge Gears of War games. So I'm not sure where Cliffy B uh, stands in this. I don't think he's wanting to shit on the idea. Unless you're talking about Gears 1 and 2 where he basically said, we're not going to do four-player couch co-op because we don't, uh, we don't have two other storyline characters at all given times. Well, that's that, 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 that's retarded. You could play as nameless gears, and you would still be able to enjoy the game. That's part of it. Um, there's also been other games that he's been involved in with his studio, People May Fly. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, I didn't think that was his studio. I thought they brought in People May Fly to do Gears Judgment. Because didn't People May Fly do that other game that looked like Gears, where you could do combos, but it was still slow and plotting, so it was kind of had an identity crisis? What was that game? You're talking Bulletstorm? Bulletstorm! Awesome. Yeah, and no, not so great. they refused to put it in multiplayer because it wouldn't work, but it totally would have worked and would have been awesome. Sure, fine, Bulletstorm. Um, I don't think Cliffy B is part of People Can Fly. He's part of Epic. I think I'm 100% I'm sure of this. Epic Games, Cliffy B. Jazz Jackrabbit. Epic Games. Yeah, which asshole am I picking on, then? You're picking on whoever made Bulletstorm, because Bulletstorm was just kind of eh. Fuck you. Yeah, no, just fuck you. Let's put in this awesome, cool combo system and stylish kills, but then let's make you move at, like, two miles per hour. 
Did you play the game? Yeah, I played it. It was it had an identity crisis. No, it didn't. It thought it was Duke Nukem on crack. It was on crack, was but in the bad way. Awesome. Uh, the demo made me go, "Wow, I'll never pl- play the full version of this." I play it at least once a year. Oh, man, I can grapple a guy and bring him to me and kick. Oh no, I'm dead because I didn't pick the easiest difficulty. And I didn't get behind cover, and the game doesn't give you enough health to pull off its tricks. You sucked. Yeah, I'm not sure how that could be possible when you can't dodge bullets. Yeah, you sucked. Yeah, uh, no. The problem is that game wanted to be Gears of War, and it also wanted to be this cool combo bullet, like, like kind of uh, jet set radio, but a first person shooter type of deal. It was, it was not good. Yeah, we're in... It's like Bethesda made it or something. Ba- Speaking of which... Oh, God. Nah, we'll, 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 we'll do the Bethesda thing later. So, Couch Co-op. You want to recommend us some Couch Co-op games? Really? The only games that we play... Jamestown. Jamestown. Diablo 3. Diablo 3 on console. Um, We'll occasionally go play Gears of War. Gears of War. Or Double Dragon Neon. Yeah, Double Dragon Neon. Or some... Halo is still I, couch I, co-op. I, I constantly want to play old NES and SNES games co-op, but you seem to think we're past that. Grow up. Grow up. Those are some of the best games made, and you're like, oh, man, it's not made by whatever guy I was thinking of who made Bulletstorm. This is the person who still, or rather has given up playing both Batman games. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Didn't catch my interest. But seriously, recommend us some couch co-op games. And if you're a game developer, make a couch co-op Metroidvania already. Is Guacamelee that? Don't know. I have no idea. We're, we're going to look into that, folks. But we're going to get to the lab, study, and dissect a few people. Ultimately, game... Well, I could suggest some games that you won't play. Yeah, because... Yeah. Like... Dungeon Defenders? Nah, it looks fine. Not my thing. Of course not. I'm not a tower defense guy, and I'm not a grinding for no reason guy. Except for Diablo 3. That's my one exception for grinding. <laughs> Except for this other game that does the exact same... <laughs> Fuck. There's really not that many couch co-op games out there. I mean, we, we played through, um... Serious Sam. Yes, we did. 3. Yep. Because 1 and 2 didn't do that. Fun game, um, a little too weird and Doom uh, slaughter map style game, but definitely fun. Just a bit. Just a bit. It's like, okay, so every level is going to have five of the boss you faced in the last level and 500 other assorted enemies. That final level. That final level was like, okay, we're just going to... We're going to make you feel like you're taking on an army. It's going to be like Dynasty Warriors, except you don't have the power to just go up and slash 500 guys. You have the power to shoot them, just stay the fuck away. And we're going to give you real... the You know those guys you found really annoying the whole game? Here's a thousand. A thousand of them. Yep. <sighs> Remember those giant rock golems that you need only explosives to defeat? Yeah, here's five of them. Remember that one psychic succubus lady enemy who could pick you up and squeeze your mind from across the map? Yeah, here's ten of them. Remember that mentor? That giant fucking mentor that you, you needed so many explosives to take out? Here's fifty. In a row. In a at row. the same time. Can we mention there's lots of suicide bombers running at you as this is happening? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was fun. That was a fun game, but I thought in a way, like, I was I was hoping, like, it was definitely Doom-like. Yeah. But it was like, okay, we're giving you speed and we're giving you guns. And our main objective is to fill this map with enemies. And yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. In a way, it was kind of like a FPS version of, like, a Double Dragon game or something. It was just kind of crazy. Just kind of, just kind of crazy. So we played, we played through that and finished that and probably go back a couple years, maybe. Kind of hoping for a serious Sam 4 by then. I'm running on empty. We got all the different fighters, but the only ones we really care about are Skullgirls and 
Oh yeah, Skullgirls. Aquapazza. There is Aquapazza. Yeah, it's a fun game. We should play it more. Hint, hint. Yeah. Bomberman. There is Bomberman. Not really co-op, but definitely competitive. I mean, I t I tend to play that a lot when I have family over. Yeah, Bomberman's a good multiplayer game. There's Geometry Wars Two. Geometry Wars Two has some multiplayer parts to it, but Geometry Wars Two, I didn't end up. I don't think it stood the test of time for me. I still really like it, but whenever I go back and I think, ah, do I want to really feel like playing some Geometry Wars Two? Not really. Pretty much. I mean, ultimately, we're getting to games where it's like, okay, I've got three other people over. What? Oh. There's the other problem. There's couch co-op two-player. There's couch co-op campaign stuff. And then there's games you can play with three or four players. Surprisingly, there's a, a number that you can play three players, like Trine. Four players starts to get you into some problems. At that point, I start to have to look for Geometry Wars, um, Dungeon Defenders... Bomberman, uh, Sonic Team Racing. We skip all the party games on the Wii. In fact, the Wii isn't even out of the box. Probably ne never will be again. You know what sucks? Uh, what was really fun for Couch Co-op was when there were double carts in Mario Kart. Yeah, Mario Kart and... Double Dash was great for that. Japanese didn't like it, so never happening again. Well, Nintendo actually said in a recent interview that the reason that they're not adding double carts yet is because to handle it over the internet, they haven't quite figured it out. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, Dave. <laughs> here's the thing. I believe them. Uh, I believe they are that inept when it comes to handling double carts. Okay. Here's the thing. It, it, actually, be, uh, before you say your spiel, I don't know if you ever took your GameCube to a LAN gathering to no. play some Double Dash. Double Dash had LAN support, okay? If you pick double carts, everybody had to be in the... If you pick two player to a cart, everybody had to do it. Okay. You could not have one, two play, players each in their own cart, and then two others both in one. I remember this. Online play. You could do it locally. Could you? Yeah, yeah, you could. You could play you could play with in fact we, we did it a couple times with Poe and Kiki. Did where, we? Uh, yeah, where uh Poe wanted to control his own his own car, so uh uh I jumped over and controlled my own car and you and Kiki were in one. Wow, I don't remember us ever doing more than two to a cart bitch slap. <laughs> uh, we, 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 did, we did do it once. Uh but I mean the point is that should always be an option, like uh, uh, like, in the new Mario Karts let you pick a cart or a bike, and one of the options should just be a double cart. I don't, I don't see the problem, but Nintendo is so clueless when it comes to online infrastructure, they don't study what their opponents do. Like, they have shit like Blur and Sonic Racing Transform that they could easily just go and go, hmm, how did they do theirs? But no, we don't play our competitors' games. Why would we? Well, okay, here's why I'm laughing. The fact that they're using that as their excuse is laughable because it's just one more control scheme. It's not that because you're doing a double cart, it's not that much... It's not any more difficult to control over land than a person driving. You're telling me that a person being in the back of the cart, punching and throwing items, is more difficult on the internet control side of things than a person driving, throwing items. Here's the thing. For Nintendo, it is. It That's is because, retarded. Because, that, yes, I know, it is, but it is tough for them. It's tough for them because... They don't consider these things, and they don't do intel on their competitors. They don't. They care live to. They live in a bubble. I say this all the time. The Wii got them lucky, and they could have come out of the bubble, used the revenue they got from the Wii, and really dominated this generation. They were in the perfect position to do so, and they fucked it up. 
it's not even that they fucked it up, it's they didn't even see the opportunity. If the we wasn't there for them, if the we didn't luck out and like bail them out, Nintendo would have portables aside already been a third party developer for like Microsoft and Sony. It would have already happened. Kinda wish it did. Yeah, I kinda wish it did too. Because maybe then their games would would step up a notch or eight when it comes to things like Mario Kart and having double carts, which they've had in a game before and then never again. Or maybe a Mario Kart with all the tracks in Mario Kart in it, instead of picking 16 arbitrary tracks from past games. Like, I, I still I still don't believe it's an internet reason. I think should, it's just... should. Is there any reason any new Mario Kart should not have every track that's been in a past game in it? Is no. there any real reason for this? Laziness. And if it was on one uh, PlayStation or Xbox DLC, I I would take that over never having them. Mm-hmm. But Nintendo has that philosophy. You have stupid fucking Sakurai with Smash Brothers saying, "I don't like to make DLC. I like to make games complete." Dipshit! Your internal testers aren't going to find everything, and you may want to add to content later. Like, yeah, there are some there are some studios that. Try to, like like Capcom with Street Fighter Cross Tekken with on disc DLC, which is bullshit. But sometimes devs really do want to add DLC later, like Skullgirls, yeah. like uh, Sonic Transformed had some DLC racers in it. Yeah, usually free. There you go. Like, I mean, ha- half the time I would turn on Steam, and Steam would say, "Hey, Sonic Team Racing is updated." It's like, "Oh, new racer." Yeah, I did. Cool. At least Nintendo now at least has the ability to patch stuff. How ironic that we started this talking about couch co-op games. Now we're bitching at Nintendo for not having online connectivity. This is always boiling down to bitching at Nintendo. This is the topic we can always rely on. Nintendo was one of the the, the greats when it came to actual couch co-op mul- multiplayer. And you still can. There's still quite a few Nintendo games. Like, if you had a Wii U set up, we could play... Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze right now. Sure, just get um, a donation of a Wii U. Oh yeah, I'm not suggesting you buy one. That would be stupid. Because I want to get one to play that game and a bunch of others, and I'll just bring it over. Yeah, like Mario. I, I'd l- I'd actually like to play Mario. Uh, What else? Did we ever play Magicka together? No. Is there gamepad support for that? No clue. Hmm. I think so, seeing as for it to have multiplayer, everybody using a keyboard would be um, kind of suicidal. It would be a little suicidal. Suicidal. How many people died in your multiplayer gaming sessions? Uh, after I took the keyboard and smacked them in the head? Just one. Hmm. Which, speaking of the lack of co-op games, or couch co-op, how about the lack of games in general on next-gen systems? Yeah, um... <laughs> You have a PlayStation 4. I will eventually get one. You haven't bit the bull and, and gone into the next gen. I was an early uh, adopter, technically. I'm assuming next gen means PS4 and Xbox One, right? Correct. Are we counting Wii U in this? No. Because they sure don't have games, so they definitely fit the context. Actually, if I added the Wii U into there, um, probably has a lot more games that have come out and are coming out than the Xbox One and PlayStation. I talked about this during Flashcasts with Chris Weston, and uh, I told him I'll get next-gen systems when there are enough games to support me getting next-gen systems. But I gotta tell you, I'm not really hearing of any killer games coming to PlayStation (laughs) 4 or Xbox One. I don't know if we've talked about this before or not, but Xbox One, there's Killer Instinct, and Season 2 of Killer Instinct. And for PlayStation 4, there's Rezogun, is that what it's called? Yep. And nothing else. Oh, and when they finally fix the music issue on it, I wouldn't mind getting the PlayStation 4 version of Pinball Arcade. And that's it. I can't think of anything else I want on these systems. So... At the moment. At the moment. Oh, Diablo 3 uh, Ultimate Edition. For sure. Okay, so... Having a, a PS4, I bought my PS4 specifically to play Infamous... Second Son. Second Son. Mm-hmm. The third game in the series. In fact, I had Infamous Second Son on my on my wall in my collection for a couple weeks, few weeks until I, it actually came out. Until you actually found until I actually got my PlayStation PS4. Four, yeah, yeah. Which Sony jacked the 
fucking price up in Canada. Thanks for that. Ah, Carlos, you so crazy. Oh, I'm going to get crazy when, when Sony Canada comes to my house holding a PlayStation 4, offering it as a peace offering, and I smash it through their skulls because they, they raised the prices by $50. No, you wouldn't. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Yeah, you're just so full of rage. But I did, I've got that. I've got Dynasty Warriors 8, which I got as part of a package. And I've got all of the free games that Sony has given out, including a couple of cross-buy games, which I automatically got access to a PS4 version of. Um, Flower and Flow. Oh. I upgraded my um, PS3 version of Pinball Arcade for the PS4 version. And yeah, sound is just... There's no excuse for the fact they're using the mobile sound files. And they said they're gonna they're, they're gonna patch it. In fact, a patch came out last week, and did not fix it, and not, wasn't even part of the. We weren't even trying to fix it on that one. Not cool, Farside Studios. Not cool. Farside blames Sony and Microsoft a lot for having for how long mobile pa- files. No, for how long it takes to get things patched. Like supposedly this patch was put in like months ago. I'm no longer buying it. I know patching takes a long time, but something tells me the reason why patches take forever for Farsight is they introduce too many bugs, which then each console then pushes back and says, fix them. Uh, you, you don't want to... And Farsight does end up allowing way too many bugs through. You don't want to release your games with just tons and tons of bugs every time you release a game. You definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to be known as a company... That they release games and they're always just filled to the brim with bugs and cheats. Well, okay, not cheats, bugs and unfinished code and terrible systems and god damn it, Bethesda sucks so hard. <laughs> so I have this theory, okay, and it's a complicated one. Bethesda has always been terrible. We're gonna bring this up now? Yeah. Yeah, you know why? You motherfucker. Because Bethesda sucks and nobody sees this okay bethesda does release buggy unfinished works yeah that's like their modus operandi it is i'm pretty sure i said that wrong i blame bethesda however the games aren't bad if you insist. once the fans have fixed it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great <laughs> way to run your company. Okay, we're going to release all of our games on every platform, and the PC guys will fix our mess, and the console guys are fucked until we sell them horse armor. But it doesn't matter, because you go try to tell people online, hey, have you ever noticed how all Bethesda games are terrible? And they're like, no, fuck you, they made Skyrim, and Daggerfall is bigger than Great Britain. And they made Fallout. I'm like, no, they Dagger made Fallout. Fall, really? Daggerfall had a had a world bigger than Great Britain. Daggerfall's not a Bethesda game. It's a totally a Bethesda. It's Elder Scrolls 2, Daggerfall. Fucking Bethesda. Elder Scrolls 2. They bragged, they, they put on the box, welcome to your new obsession. And I'm like, oh, which part of the obsession am I a part of? Is it the one where I just fell through the world? Is it the one where the world is deemed as being bigger than Great Britain, but the majority of it is plain fields that would make Alberta's plain fields look like carnivals by comparison? Wow. Jamie. Okay, uh, I'm going to say this right now. Um, actually, I thought Daggerfall was a um, Dungeons & Dragons game. I only got actually involved in the Elder Scrolls series in Oblivion. I went back and tried to play a little bit of Morrowind and couldn't stand it. That's because that game was terrible. Actually, Morrowind wasn't terrible. Swing I just, your weapon, hit an enemy straight on, doesn't count. Crania, yeah, it's all Bethesda games. Because Bethesda doesn't know how to do something simple like, hey, your weapon hit a guy, let's register a hit. Yeah, but according to you, it does that in every game and you're wrong. Uh, it does that in quite a few of them. Quite a lot of them. Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, and Fallout New Vegas. As long as you knew how to play the fucking game, oh, you oh, could hit. Oh, good. 
the Sonic the Hedgehog excuse. Oh, if you have skill, the games are good. If you know how to avoid the parts where you fall through the world, if you know how to avoid the parts where the homing attack just doesn't work for some reason, even though you have a guy targeted or aimed right at him, you just do your air dash into him and die. Yeah, yeah, if you have skill, that doesn't happen. Okay, continue your Sonic Team ramble here, Dave. Go. Ouch. I don't want to do this discussion anymore. <laughs> Look, okay. Um, um, all Venom aside... I Look, a lot of I, people like Bethesda games. I like Dynasty Warriors 2, or Dynasty Warriors Gundam. So, that's what I always say to people. Look, I like a lot of janky shit, okay? But I'm honest about the janky shit I like. Just stop putting Bethesda on a pedestal when they're, when they're garbage. But again, I will never argue that Bethesda releases buggy... Trashy. No. no. Combat system. No. Games. No. I was playing, like, Dragon's Dogma, and I was like, wow, look how much better this combat system is than anything Bethesda's ever made. And I'm thinking to myself, is this why I didn't play this game forever? Because I was afraid it was going to be like Bethesda's? Look how much they tainted me. I took an arrow to the knee. Ha 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 I'm glad they spent all that time writing those arrow to the knee jokes, and instead of making your dragons not... Their corpse is not ragdoll into the into the sunset sometimes in the, in Skyfall or whatever it's called <laughs> Skyrim. Uh, again, I'm not gonna defend the bugs. Uh, uh, look, uh, all I'm saying is Venom aside. I like janky shit too. Let's just be honest with ourselves when it comes to Bethesda. Bethesda, they're kind of like they're kind of like Rockstar Games in that they disappear forever and they come down from on high and release a gem. And then they disappear for a while again. The difference is Rockstar actually does that. <laughs> I don't even care for Rockstar games. Uh, we can agree to disagree on this one. Oh, we can. We can both agree that Bethesda releases buggy shit. Uh, yeah. But. And we can also agree that they release games that have horrible systems, mechanics. No. Characters. I stories, don't agree. Polygons, textures. Backgrounds. Just because you suck. <laughs> and this is now a proven fact that you suck, by the way. Um, no, Beth Bethesda games, once we fix them, are good. Yeah, you can't even defend them! It's like, oh man, look how awesome Skyrim is after eight user patches. And it's not even Bethesda patches. <laughs> it's user patches. Users are fixing this, and then the very same users go out and say, look how awesome Bethesda is! It's like when a psychic tricks a fool, and they're like, I, I'm seeing a Jim, a James, a George. Yeah, I knew someone named George. Oh, I knew that, even though you just told me. Bethesda is a dirty psychic. You mean there's a clean psychic? No, they're all scammers, because psychic powers aren't real. And that's what Bethesda is. <laughs> if Bethesda was a person, James Randi would have killed it. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you brought up the Bethesda. Well, it had to come out. Everyone in their mother's like, oh my god, Skyrim. Actually, it sucks. Actually, it sucks. No, it doesn't. Actually, when you need to put a Macho Man dragon hack on your game in order for it to be somewhat not boring, or when you can watch Steam Train, a side little spin-off of Game Grumps of all things, and he's showing you how you can hold a plate and then walk through a wall... Maybe your company's terrible. I've never seen that. It's actually a pretty good series. I, I recommend... I don't normally recommend a Game Grumps anything these days, but sometimes, like the Pack Attack one, there's a funny one. And the series they did on Skyrim, where he's showing you how to speed run through the game, is actually wow. pretty funny. Because, I mean, my experience with, with Skyrim, um, I enjoyed what I, what I played, but I'd say the biggest problem was I played halfway through the campaign... And then put a hundred hours into exploring the rest of the world while not giving a flying fuck about the campaign. What a great campaign. But I had lots of fun exploring. Did you really have yeah. a lot of fun exploring? Yes. Well, you do like Flower and and, and Flow and all those other weirdo and games. And Journey. And all those other weirdo games that just kind of make a mockery of the art form. 
That was too harsh. Let me, really? Let me, let me retry that. That kind of really mockery the art form. Really? Known as gaming. They're like adventure games. They're not really games. What do you call a dead adventure game in a ditch? A swear to God. <laughs> ah! This has not become the David podcast because <laughs> you're not going to survive to the, so the next one, you fat guys fight each other over games podcast. Adventure games and a ditch being a good fuck you. I'm just saying that when I heard that Fables was getting turned into a game and I'm like, oh, who's the developer? And it's like Telltale. I was like, no! Well, why? Why do people like Slender? I still hear all the time about how Slender is this great fucking game. I know we did an entire episode of why it's terrible, but that fucking shitty walking simulator piece of crap is still beloved by the populace. People like cheap scares? Why don't they just, I don't know, take a shit? Because sometimes it comes out really quick and it scares you for cheap. <laughs> Why don't you just look in front of a mirror and play peekaboo with yourself? If you're that fucking gullible that you think this is a good game. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm getting so angry. This is what happens when we come into a podcast with no topics. We just start venting. Oh god, it, all, all the anger is coming out. Uh, uh, the Kingdom Hearts series is garbage. Oh god. Oh no. Uh, it's all coming out. Okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm gonna shut you up with the act, <laughs> with, with our main topic for the day. Oh, what was our main topic again? That was, um, the Steam, PSN, and Xbox Live sales and subscriptions. You know what I like about Steam? Just everything. about everything. I don't like that users can make their own tags, though. Don't like that. I'm like, look, I think Noel has nice tits, too, but I don't want to see that as a tag on Blaze Blue, okay? Although I like the walking simulator tag attached to shit like Gone Home and fucking Slender, because I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a good descriptor. It's about a simulating walking. Good game! Let's make an extra credits episode out of it. Okay. Hell, I'll even speed up this next part so that it sounds like extra credits. You know what's awesome about Slender? It has agency. It teaches you how to be afraid of a goofball in a fucking white mask while you search for pages, and that's the whole game. Okay, I'll slow it back down now. Do you see how stupid extra credits sound sometimes, people? <laughs> and I love extra credits sometimes. He's not even speeding it up. Well, I'll speed it up. It's a post -print. No, that that's not his voice, you dumbass. That's how... ever. No, that's you, how fast he actually talks. Have you ever heard his voice? You are on crack cocaine. I've heard his voice. He's been on podcasts and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. There was a Digital Gonzo episode where they had a couple of guys from Extra Credits on and they talked like normal ass people. They also had Movie Bob on, so I immediately deleted the podcast and burned my phone. Point is, the Extra Credit guys don't talk like chipmunks for real. You know who does talk like a chipmunk for Sorry. real? Nobody. No, I fucked that up. Were you thinking of Fred? I was thinking of Yahtzee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahtzee does talk that fast for real. Also pretentious cunt hole, but talks fast. Back to the main topic. All right, Steam which, Sales. Which you managed to derail once again. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, you know what's awesome about Steam Sales? Everything. You save money. Good topic. Is, well, it, I, is it a good thing, though? Well, this came up the other day when I was, when I was wondering openly, and you answered some of my questions about... Uh, Hey, do game publishers agree to the various Flash sales? Are they still getting a full cut for every game made? Is Valve taking the cut? Are they agreeing to the sales? Do they have no choice? That kind of deal. Well, and as far as I know about specifically Valve's, I mean, that that is the developer. Valve basically goes out and says, Hey guys, who wants to be in the sale? Give us the prices you want for specific days, etc., etc., and the voting can happen, which is a big th change in the past um, couple of them. But that is very much at a developer's leisure. Valve actually has no say in the matter. Hmm. Um, where companies start... Like, they always have a say in the matter, but what they make on it is a little bit less transparent on Xbox Live, PSN, 
as well as the um, Apple OS. I know Microsoft, at least they used to be, they like to set the prices for stuff and not let publishers set their own. Pretty much as that's how it worked until the Xbox One. Even that has been a little bit di discussed. But I know that they don't, like, say, charge for Big Ben or Squiggly for the first three months. But they did, like, charge for the Stranger's Dream DLC for Bastion when, the, uh, um, who the fuck made Bastion now? What was the company that made Bastion? You're asking me? Really? They didn't want to charge a cent for it. And on PC and PSN, it was on PSN, yeah. you got Stranger's Dream for free. You actually had to pay a buck on Xbox. Yeah, because Xbox demands that any data that goes through their network has to have a charge. Because Microsoft has to make kickbacks. Of course. Got an answer to those stockholders who hate your gaming division. That's also why it costs like 40 grand to do a patch. Yep. Got an answer to those stockholders. Fuck Microsoft. Um, but when it comes to... I'd say the worst of the group is Apple. Because Apple will give a game for free... And the developer gets fucking nothing in most cases. Yeah, Apple does have a lot of skeevy, scummy practices when it comes to their app store. It's stuff like you can't sell an app that's similar to something we offer, which meant you couldn't get Chrome on iOS for the longest time. Mm -hmm. um, now, Xbox Live subscription... Now it gives you a free game you get to keep every month, or a couple of games. Just like PlayStation Plus, which was a good idea. Well, they did that as a alternative to PlayStation Plus. The only thing that Microsoft does differently is when they give you the game for free, it's your game forever, even if you end your Xbox Live subscription. Hmm. That's kind of neat, but from the... I no longer even have my Xbox hooked up, so I can't really talk too much about it. But friends that I have that do have Xbox Live and, and a subscription, they haven't been too enthused by the um, quality of the games they've been getting for free. Oh, wow. Forza. <laughs> Microtransaction hell. Yeah. Ooh. Whereas every month you're getting multiple games through PSN, you're also getting discounts, which Microsoft had its first discount sale about a month ago, and it shocked the living hell out of everybody, because they'd never done a sale before. Well, why do they want to do that? They're beholden to their stakeholders. Whereas Sony has discounts on different games almost every week. So now, of discounts, Google Play, I believe they leave it up to the to the publisher, they can just set their own price or free if they like. But Google Play also lets people put up like root hacking tools for if your phone has root access on it and other things that you need to hack your phone for. Stuff that would void your warranty, but you can still get the app for it on Google Play. Great. So, so they're I'm, very they're very open. Now. So I'm going to give you the ability to root your phone so you can basically not pay anybody for anything. Fantastic. Yeah, good good job, Android. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, jackass. The idea... So, sorry, I thought, we're, we're talking about gaming systems and operating systems. Get, get your Android out of there. Yeah, the Android counts. Fuck you. And Next year we talk about the Ouya. No, fuck the Ouya. Fuck you and the Ouya. Fuck you ya. Or, or or what? What's next? You're gonna talk about the Shield? Come the on, Shield fuck off. is an on is on is an awesome an awesome. It, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Okay, fuck your face. I'll I could ki I could kill a man with my Nvidia Shield. It's that hefty and feeling good. Look, we're talking about gaming systems. Yeah, the Shield. And we're talking about I made mean, predominantly their, to game. Their their sales and everything else. Yeah, and Android counts, because they're... You talked about iOS, you stupid motherfucker. Of course we're going to count Google Play. Moving on. I hate you. I hate you so fucking much. I hate everything you stand for. And I hate $50 price increases from Sony on their stupid PlayStation 4. But I hate you too. <sighs> there, there, princess. I'm sorry for, for mocking your Android operating system. Except I'm not. 
I actually have very little respect for the Android user base when it comes to apps, mainly because it seems everybody who I talk to online, and yes, this is not quite objective. No, it isn't, but go on. But the Android seems like a vi- not. Let me try and put this into proper. Yeah, please do. You almost want to root your phone automatically to be able to do a lot of stuff on it. That's, let me clarify something here. I've never rooted my shield because everything, the shield does not have bloatware. Um, they don't have a lot of things running in the background when they don't need to be. Samsung phones have this. I rooted my Galaxy S3 on day two because I couldn't stand Samsung's crap. Uh, Nexus phones tend to be very clean and they run stock Android very well. So, I mean, you have to look at the developer. Google has given, has made Android open source. So you have Samsung and HTC loading it up with their own thing, but still technically Android compatible, right? So you have to consider the third party devs. You have shit like Ouya, where you can't connect to the Play Store. You have to use their shitty store. Whereas the Shield, the version of Android that's on NVIDIA Shield, uh, the, the stock ROM that it runs is based much more closely based on stock Android. I don't know how to speak words. Uh, it's much more based on stock Android and it connects to Play Store and it doesn't try to be like its own storefront kind of deal. Um, so you have to consider that. It's like if Apple let other developers make iPhones, but they're allowed to modify iOS to their own tastes. Yeah, that'll never happen. If, if, like, I, I guess a large uh, part uh, of my... I'm probably going to get a Nexus 5 next week to replace my broken S3, and I'm probably not going to root it. Hmm. I'm almost certainly not going to root my Nexus 5. Um, Kiki recently got a Galaxy S5 before she or I realized that Samsung locked their stupid bootloader on their phone so that you can't root it, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, Kiki does seem happy with it regardless, but I still feel pissed that Samsung is holding its users hostage for hardware that they've effectively sold them. Fuck that. You should be allowed to root any phone you want. It should be your option. It should be... Devs like Sony have actually come out and given people who want to root their phones, like, access to the SDKs and shit. But they do say, it'll void your warranty, but here you go. Even on a NVIDIA site for the Shield, they tell you where you can access resources to root your shield and they warn you to avoid your warranty. It should be open. I don't That's... necessarily agree and this is more from oh god, I'm going to actually defend copyright. I hate you all. I hate you more. <sighs> My biggest problem with Android as a platform is that anybody who I talk to mm -hmm has rooted their phone and hasn't paid for a fucking application on it. I've rooted my phone and I paid for all my applications. Okay, one. Okay, one. And guess what? How many people jailbreak their fucking iPhones and don't pay for a thing either? Not as many. Yeah, that is the most circumstantial fucking evidence I've ever heard in my life. Yes! Um, people who want to steal shit are going to steal shit. Rooting your Android... Like, even on an unrooted phone, you can still tell the OS to go install unsigned apps, and you can you can download apps that you've on stolen. On Android, you're correct. You can do that on Android. Yeah. Uh, iOS, no, you can't, but that means you can't install anything. No humble Android bundle for iOS. Nope. Because you can't install things that haven't gone through Apple's stupid process. Correct. So, I mean... Um, Venom aside, there are pros and cons to each system. Venom firmly installed, fuck you. What the hell were we even talking about again? It's like the fifth time we've gone off topic. Steam. This yeah. is the worst episode ever. Yeah, we're not putting this out. What do you mean we're not putting this out? We're putting this out. Oh, God. You're like, oh, we should just keep doing the anime rave. It's got more hits than the podcast. Let's give up the podcast. I want to fucking give up the podcast. We're talking about games. Let me have this. 
I'm having a full-on existential crisis here, folks. We're canceling this next week. We're not canceling <laughs> fucking Two Fat Guys Talk Games. You know what I'll cancel? I'll cancel your face with my fist. I'm I'm sorry. I'm making executive decisions. You're not making... I'm, we're we're canceling Two I Fat Guys Talk Games. I installed a bomb into your abdomen, and I will hit the button. Hit the button now, fucker. <laughs> Cancelled. No, we're not. We're, we're, we are releasing this episode, and it's going to be awesome, and it's going to beat out our there, stupid anime hey, rave there, reviews. There's two facts going forward. No, no. We're not getting a, f a Firefly Season 2, uh -huh. and we're cancelled. We're not cancelled. I'll cancel your ball sack with my... Cancer? <laughs> yeah, with my cancer. I'll, I'll I'll grab some of the, the remnants of the testicular cancer hat and rub it all over your nuts. What the hell is the picture of this gonna be? <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. What do you think of of uh, the subscriptions? Don't fucking talk to me. <laughs> now be professional. Fuck professional subscriptions to what? To both PSN and Xbox Live. I, I don't know, five? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't fucking care. Uh, sure, great, I get free games out of it. You know, games, the thing we're podcasting about? <laughs> we're. We're podcasting about it. We're, 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 yeah, we're, my... They're fine. I don't mind subscriptions to online pay services. Um, one could argue, oh, Steam, you can do it for fucking free, but keep in mind, any multiplayer game on Steam uses a host client model, right? Which actually was affected here recently by the, um, Game... GameSpy? Shutdown? Oh? I didn't yeah, Ga this. GameSpy, um, is shutting down their servers completely. Oh! Which means that a whole bunch of different games are actually now affected. Wow. Huh. I know I was playing D3 on console online the other day, and... I know it does the host client thing, but on PS3, I'm not surprised because you don't need PS Plus to play multiplayer on it. Correct. Uh, Sony very sneakily and quietly, while they were sho shiving Microsoft in the back during E3, uh, they mentioned that you need to pay now to play online. I don't think they snuck that in at all. They were quite open about the fact. Yeah, they were super clear in while ta while gaining fanfare and talking about how they are going to keep doing things per normal and getting cheered for it. It was it was it was purposely devious. Smart though. I don't smart. think so. I think it was smart. I'm not saying they shouldn't have done it. I'm saying it was it was it was it was snide. It was snide and it was devious and they snuck that in. But the fact of the matter remains is that yeah, uh now that you're paying for it, they better give you servers. Look, when I was still a big Microsoft diehard during the heights of the 360, I had no problem playing paying for Xbox Live. Um when I got my Xbox 360, I got it for when I was still a Sonic fanboy. I got it for Sonic 06. Broke my fucking heart. But then I'm like, holy shit, look how awesome this system is for the other games that are on it. And I did not mind once paying for Xbox Live Gold because we had you and I and friend of the show Shane and friend of the show Sean and friend of the show Aaron and occasional guests on the show Kiki Poe, Richie and others and friend of the show Marcus and friend of everyone, everyone has had so many good has so many hours playing awesome games on Xbox Live that I still remember some of our conversations and all of our triumphs and failures at yeah. each other's hands. It is good shit. Uh, and so, what, what games were we playing? We base it, that was for Halo. Let, Halo let, let's not... Halo, Gears of War, we played quite a lot of Gears of War with each other as well. I just Not as much. Not as much. It, it was more Halo because it was, it was since Forge Mode became a thing. Yeah. Um... Maybe Destiny will rekindle those fires. I'm kind of hoping it does. I kind of miss the gang, to be honest with you. Yeah. But yeah, that'll be completely PlayStation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm not buying a one if I can avoid it. I don't want Killer Instinct enough to get that thing. And I don't want Dead Rising 3 enough for it. There you go. Yeah, just no. It it's going to take a lot to get me to buy a an Xbox 1. Myself, I kept an Xbox One or an Xbox Live subscription for a long time, even when we basically wound down the gang. And then finally one day I'm like, okay, 
just went in, disabled the subscription, no renewal, and I was just done. And not long after that, after I moved, I didn't even hook the damn thing up. It's just, there's no games I want to go back to other than maybe some couch co-op Halo or Gears of War or something one day that we might fire up. There's nothing left. There's no RPGs I want to go back to play on there. In fact, there weren't really any RPGs on there to begin with. We yes. could have more couch co-op RPGs, but not the Tales series. The Tales series sucked. So, yeah. Well, actually, I heard Tales of Zillia was really good. You you still haven't force-fed me that game. <sighs> it's coming. Fuck. Uh, but Halo, the shooters were what made the Xbox for us. I mean, I had Crackdown. I had... I played the Darkness originally on there. I played some some really good games, but the majority of them were shooter based kind of games. Um, for RPGs, I had to go elsewhere, and that was Sony. That's where all the freaking RPGs went. Even when Microsoft got it, the PlayStation got the better version a year down the road. So I don't see much changing based on the release schedule going forward for the two systems. It, it still seems like, you know, RPG, most of the RPGs are going down the path of Sony with the occasional showing up on Xbox One, maybe. The two big, big ones that people are looking forward to, Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts Three, announced for both systems. At least this time it won't be multiple discs on the Xbox. Yeah, that'll be nice. <laughs> I mean, it was always fun in RPGs and on the X Xbox 360 having to change discs. What is this? Early PC? <laughs> PlayStation 1, 2? 1 and 2. Yeah. You know, the previous gen. <laughs> <laughs> the previous gen. But yeah, no, it's... I'm fine with Xbox Live subscriptions, I, even though I don't use it. I, I felt it was kind of stupid that that's all you basically got for your subscription was the ability to play online and buy Xbox Live arcade games the week they came out. Yeah, instead of the week after or something. Um, but besides that, you weren't getting anything. With PSN Plus, it's just been amazing from day one with all the games they've given you and i discovered dragon's dogma because of it i mean every week that sony puts out a game i go on there and if you go in through the store um on through a web browser you can mark down the playstation 4 and the vita games even if you don't have one yep so it's on your account for whenever you want to access it mm -hmm. and that was great because i was able to download like four or five games free day one. Resogun. Um, Contrast. Mercenary Kings. Uh, Don't Starve. That Zombie Nation one. Zombie Nation? I think it's Zombie Nation. Zombie Nation. Um, they weren't games I would have bought on my own, but you know something? As far as free games go, they've been kind of cool. Yeah, I think we've run this one out as long as we freaking can. Oh, we went to an hour. We'll have to do the female protagonist war part two next time, I think. I need, I really need to be prepared for that one. Yeah, you do, because I'm going to tear you apart. No, no, you're not. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that, of course, the podcast is not canceled. That it will be continuing. I'm giving you one more episode. Well, you're, you're not giving me anything. Yeah. You are going to come back all the time. Because you need to be here, because I'll get... I'll, I'll, what am I going to do, just talk for an hour? Actually, you are right. Um, whether or not we cancel it will be decided by episode 50. No, fuck you. Because that gives us time for the female pr protagonist, the end friends episode, and 50 might just be the... Um... Yeah, I'll continue without you, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll, I'll, it's not I'll be like, bad, guys. it's Carlos <laughs> and Dave, and I'll, I'll just talk for an hour. <laughs> and every time you have to talk, I'll just, I'll, I'll sound the Price is Right lose noise. I'll be like, what are you thinking about that, Dave? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, so you're going to do a, a chef from 
freaking South Park. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll have 50 episodes of your voice. I can just fucking splice <laughs> together anything I need. All right, I, I, I guess how, how this goes will all be dependent by the fans. Yeah, the, the pen, but we're, then, we're, then we're not, we're coming back. We have like 10 listeners. We have more than 10 listeners. Look, just because yeah. we've gotten more hits on the three or four anime raves we've done so far. Three. Than we, than we have through our entire 46 that's, current that, podcast. That's on YouTube. The non-YouTube numbers are what matters. Are you saying those numbers make up the difference? I don't know. I haven't checked them in forever because I'm too afraid to look. <laughs> yeah, so um, let us know what you think in the comments and whether we should um, give up. All right, before we go on our Two Fat Guys Talk Games YouTube channel, uh, the day that this comes out, we're also going to put out a little short where we talk about Transformers crossover with Ava. And then the week after that, the Wednesday following, will be the next episode of the Anime Rave, which is probably going to be the first three episodes of Stein's Gate. So we can pull that off like the hurtful bandage ah. that it is and shit on what has uh, been apparently one of the Internet's favorite series. Hopefully we can change a few minds because it is horrible. Yeah. We're not doing a mid season or an end season for that one. That that one's just done. And it, you managed to convince us to do ep go and check out episode three. You're not convincing us to do anything else. But who am I kidding? Ten people listen to this anyway, so no one's gonna convince us anything. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. There there, Carlos. There, don't, there. don't touch me. Okay, touch me, but don't talk to me. <laughs> anyway, this has been Dave. Fuck off. <laughs> and Carlos, signing off until next time. Goodbye. So if you've liked what you heard, you want to leave us some feedback, you want to give us some criticism, whatever, our podcast site is tfgtg.blogspot.com, where you can also find the feed link and our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Twitter at tfgtg. Yeah, there's, <laughs> right. no, there's no way to continue that. So no uh, continue please, that sentence. <laughs> please leave us some feedback. We accept good and bad. We will usually respond, seeing as we have such, such a small group. Bonus. We do have thousands of millions of followers, so we might not respond to you right away. Sure, let's go with that.